you have the uh, uh, something out here, and then you have the Big Bang, and then you have whatever we call the universe here. You have uh, things about the things of life and everything like that. Life itself going on. We live in life, but what's beyond life? Well, I don't know. When you go down, what do you get? Quantum. You go down the quantum quirks. What do you get in quirks? Well, I don't know down there. Well, that's what I think the ancients meant by you just keep going down the, the, the abyss, 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 abyss. What's under that? And you know they all say about the uh, they went to the, the ruler wanted to know what held the earth up, what was under the four parts. They said, well, a turtle here, and a turtle there, and a turtle here, and a turtle there. They said, well, what's they resting on? And the fellow said, it's turtles all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> So, well, and then there's another one is, uh, you know, the, the abyss of nothingness. There's nothingness out there. Well, uh, no, nothingness, emptiness, you know, have no, uh, it's irrational. There's nothing, who can think about anything? It's inscrutable, you know. Uh, and uh, the Buddhists have a thing, it's beyond. Well, beyond what? Uh, beyond, beyond. Well, what is it? Beyond the beyond the beyond, you know, that kind of stuff. Well, it's that kind of thing, you know. When you talk about the ultimate reality, and uh, you cannot know ultimate reality. The Old Testament was good about that. You see God, you die. You know, uh, boom, you're out of it. I like that. Now, uh, what you do then? You come in, and the first thing, what do you hit? Is life. Life, as you see, life itself, and life uh, is made up of polarities. And uh, I like uh, the. Uh, Carl Jung, the great 20th century theologian, he said, there's no polarity without, uh, there's no reality without polarity. That's his little couplet. I love that. And uh, so uh, it's, it's a model as, uh, 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 of relative reality. You have relative reality and reality is made up of these opposites. And that's the only thing is you know. That is... Uh, uh, those two realities held together, uh, well, I'll come back to it, uh, relative reality. You have uh, individual, uh, you have inner and outer. Uh, uh, you have inner uh, being and becoming. You have life affirmative and life negative. You have formlessness and form. You have stillness, emptiness, nothingness, and you have Activity, fullness, and everything. Uh, you know, that kind of thing like that. You have inner and outer. Male and female. Uh, Father, God, and Goddess. Uh, spirit and manifestation. Kindness and hatred. Beyond hope and hope. <laughs> and uh, above and below. And comprehensive and individualistic. And a great saint and an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you know, either one of those, however you know. All that's held by life. You know, people, you see them around, and you see various, you can see the street names like we were talking about and everything else, you know. All of that. So, you see, that's just life. Well, ultimate reality uh, is the only thing we know, and we only know it as relative reality, because where else can you go? You're up against the inscrutable. If you put it this way, you're up against the inscrutable. What is there? Well, there's nothing but ultimate, there's nothing but relative reality. But there's that, that relative reality has a peak of being, a ream of formlessness, and formlessness, and emptiness, and nothingness. And the nothingness is the next thing to the abyss, is where being is, you know. And so that's where life is, uh, the totality of life is. Now I'll come back to that in a moment. But so that kind of thing is what's that you're able to participate in. And so what you're doing in the spirit life is the growth in the ability to understand the closeness of, uh, of, of you are to from uh, that relative reality becoming more or less becoming and more being. You're coming from relative reality to ultimate reality. And whereas uh, you get some of us that have the great big hunks of bodies and everything. You get relative reality, subtle bodies that little, uh, I don't know, quantum molded ads, whatever you want to be. I don't know. It's beyond what we can articulate, you know, so you don't want to talk about that, you get in trouble. So that's the kind of thing that we have. Now, so that's where you meditate. You meditate to get more and more farmless, far more farmless. And the Nirvikala and the Sahaja state is you stay in the uh, uh, that 
uh, farmless state, but you, uh, but it's also the farm, and you're all constantly coming to the farm. And when you talk about stillness, and you hear people going to a, a, a great cathedral, how it's quiet and still. Well, that's a good point. But that's what meditation, you go from um, uh, stillness, more stillness, emptiness, and into formlessness. And then, then you begin to oscillate into that. And they talk about the great circle of one. You are, uh, you, uh, I like uh, This is a model, so uh, it's not an eternal truth, but a model. Uh, it, you go from uh, Nirvakasala, the great uh, formless God, to the form God, to the formless God, to the form God, back and forth. Uh, that, in other words, that is, they, and sometimes they call it the play Aliyah, it's that spirit uh, or uh, consciousness itself. If you want to put it that way, uh, goes where it wants, and it's all over the place. In other words, it can go into the depths of your spirit, can go up to the height of your experience, to the height of the farm, or to the lowest of farmness, and be who it is. Well, that's uh, so you don't have to worry. That's who you are. Life is good, you know.